Okay, let's have a look at a multiplication and representing it using physical materials. So we have six multiplied by 35, which we've represented here as being six groups of 35, three tens and five ones. What we can do, and if my screen was big enough, we could have these all down here in a nice rectangular or array fashion. And we could represent it as a rectangle. So this six times 35 can be represented as a rectangle. That is six wide and 35 long. Six groups with 35 across. Every multiplication can be represented using a rectangle. We either talk about multiplication when we're talking about groups and the amount per group is always the same, or we can talk about it in terms of arrays and rectangles. So this is six multiplied by 35, but we can partition our 35 into three tens, 30 plus five. And that creates two rectangles for us. We have a six by five rectangle. And we have a, let me use a different color, a six by 30 rectangle. Now, if we set it out in the way that your students have uh, been most likely shown in class, 35 times by six, They'll frequently be required to do this in one single step. We're going to take two steps to do this and I'll explain why as we do it. So it's six times five, six times five here, which is 30. So we write down our 30. Then we've got six times 30. Now six times 30 is 180. But if your child's having trouble with that, what you can do is partition this even further. So we've made each of these 10 long instead of a total of 30. So you can say, well, six times 10 is 60, 60, and 60. So that we're getting our 180 as we build up their understanding. Try and avoid using things like six times three is 18 and put a zero on the end. That doesn't build their understanding. It's a shortcut. It's okay if you understand what the shortcut means, but most students won't and it will confuse them. So six times 30 is 180. And now we have to add those together to get our big rectangle because the two smaller rectangles, our 30 and our 180, join together to give us our big rectangle of six times 35. Zero and zero is zero. 30 and 80 is 110. So we're going to put down the one and carry our 100. And now we've got 100 plus 200, uh, sorry, another 100 is 210. Now I mentioned that your, your child may have been shown this as a single step and I'll explain why I personally think it's important to get this right first before doing that. So if we have 35 times 6, it's often 6 times 5 is 30, put down the 0 and we carry this 3. And in fact what we're carrying is the 30 or 3 tens over. Then we're six times three or 30, which is, is what it is, is 180 plus the three is 210. Now there's a lot of process going on there. You're doing in a single step, these two steps, and that can be very confusing for a student. Once they're good with this, and they can see or visualize the representation and do the multiplication, 
then we can move them to a single step. But you run the risk if you start here of them not fully understanding what the written process is and why they're doing each of the steps.